Hi, how are you today? This is Snehal Patel, and we're over at the Zeiss booth, and we're celebrating. Uh, we're celebrating a new lens line. So, you've heard of the CP2 line, right? The CP2 lenses, one of the most popular and successful cinema lens uh, lenses out there. We sold over 30,000 pieces since the lenses first came out. And the CP2s were very popular because they gave you affordable cinema quality glass that had nice focus marks, nice iris marks, good rings, good size, and interchangeable mount. And of course, the quality was top notch. Now we've taken it to the next level with the CP3. So the CP3 also has very good construction and design, but now you can see that the rings are much more dampened and you know smoother. You do have the interchangeable mount system, and of course you have a smaller front element. So now you have 95 di diameter instead of the usual 114 on the CP2s. And also all the lenses are a lot more consistent, so they're all closer in shape and size to one another. They're also consistent in T-stops. So the 15, 18, and 21, those three are T29, but everything else is T21 from 25 all the way to 135. So the 25, 28, 35, 50, 85, 100, and 135, all of them are T21. So they're quite fast, they're nice, good quality, good construction design, better micro contrast because of the paint that's used inside to really darken the inside to stop any kind of reflections. And then also you have the fact that um, because of the new coatings that we're using and the kind of just construction of the lens, you have reduced chromatic aberration and more um, you know, usage in HDR because of the micro contrast, you see a lot more levels of contrast. So overall, is it a better lens? Yes, absolutely. You'll see a marked quality difference between a CP2 um, lens that's a T2.1 versus a CP3 lens. So there is definitely a difference. And on top of that, is that the CP3s comes in two versions. So you can get the regular CP3 version or you can get the version that we call the XD for extended data. And the XD version comes with a connector in the back over here to interface with cameras and also comes with an external cam uh, connector just in case your camera can't interface with it. So the beautiful thing is, is that we're using the Cook Eye protocol to transmit lens information to the camera or a LUT box or all kinds of different things or monitors. Um, not only are we giving you focus and iris data or and hyperfocal distance and some of the basics that you would get, let's say in a master prime lens, which is way more expensive, but you're also getting extended data. And the extended data is real time distortion and shading data for the lens based on what the focal distance is and based on what the iris is. So I'll show you a demonstration on the screen of what you're gonna see when I move the lens, it actually changes the numbers on the screen because we have hooked up with Pomfret. So a live grade can actually see the distortion and shading data and we use a box, a master locket plus to transmit that data live from the camera to the DIT station. And what happens is you can actually correct the image live. Why would you want to do that? The lenses have a beautiful look and of course you don't want to correct the lens, quote unquote. You just want to correct it for let's say VFX. So you want to preserve your look. You still want the look of your lens, right? But you do a close up on somebody, then you do a wide shot and you have a green screen. But the problem with the green screen is that you have to create a plate that's much larger than the actual screen that you're using, just in case the camera moves around. But you have to stitch images together. So you take multiple shots of video and you stitch it together. And just like in photography, you already know that if you want to stitch something in panorama, you got to unshade it and undistort it so that everything looks even. And then you can add a look to it afterwards, you know, if you wanted to. The beauty of our system is that that data data gets saved, you go ahead and undistort and unshade an image, get it to VFX, create your shot, and then you could reapply that look when you're done with it. And that's the beauty of having that metadata just there in the stream. So um, this lens not only gives you, like I said, focus and iris, but also gives you live shading and distortion data. So this lens is available very shortly, so you'll start shipping the CP3s, the normal versions, in about June or July, and then by September we'll start shipping the XDs, and you can order all of these right now, and you can place your orders and get in line, and uh, these are going to be very exciting. Um, we've had a chance to give these to a number of cinematographers to try out, um, to use, before we came here to NAB, and it's been a really, really positive experience because they do see a marked difference between the CP2 line and CP3, but also they appreciate the construction and, and foremostly the data. 
because I know it's confusing right now how metadata is used and how it's all coming together. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that there's never software solutions to help you out. But we have not only the live grade solution and the uh, silver stack solution that we talked about where you can capture that data, we've also worked with Black Magic. So in DaVinci Resolve, you could actually see that data and apply it to your video and then create an output to like go to VFX pipeline and like an EXR output or something like that. So we're already giving you the tools right now today. And by the time the lenses ship, there'll be even more partners on board and soon you'll see camera manufacturers taking the data directly inside. So on this lens, I'll show you that part of this information is already available. So if I move the focus and iris on the Alexa Mini, you'll notice that you're actually getting um, the data coming out on the display. So at least the Alexa and the RED and cameras like that and even Blackmagic will very quickly be able to at least give you the iris and, and um, focus data, but soon they'll be also making the streams available to you for the shading and distortion as well. And on a final note, to send off our beautiful, beautiful CP2 lenses, what we've done at NAB is had an artist come in, Joseph, and he's actually painting a set of CP2 T1 lenses so that we can have these at our different offices and give them to our strategic partners. But it's, I think, a nice way to say thank you and to send them off in a very beautiful way. So we're creating art with something that creates art. So if you want more information, go to our website, zeiss.com forward slash cine, C-I-N-E, and all this information is available. Thank you very much.